Welcome back to Websites for Beginners. And we are working with our crash course from zero to semi-hero. This is a new slogan I made up, wasn't part of the original intention of this course. But helping you to understand how you can go from knowing nothing about making a website to getting to making your own website. If you've just joined from this video, I highly recommend you go to the playlist and start from the very beginning, because as they say, it's a very good place to start. We created the About Us section in the previous video. In this one, we are going to go and create an image gallery. And that is great if you want to promote your products. We're working with a coffee shop. No need to tell them we've got coffee, we've got chai latte and that kind of stuff. People want to discover, people want to experience, they want to have novel experiences. So keep it a nice little surprise for them. And we're just going to add these three images. This part of the tutorial is going to blow your mind with what you can do. We were on the front end, so I'll close this tab. We go back into the builder and at the bottom, we select add a new block and we select create your own. You see, as we go on, things become very repetitive. And once you get into that automation, things become really, really simple. Question, previous one, we worked with this section of the About Us. We had two parts, so we made two columns. Now, if you look at this, one, two, three images, what do you think would be our approach to make sure that we've got these three images in this block? The answer would be we need three partitions and partitions, they are columns. Within our block, click on the plus and then select the column, drag it in and we have two columns, but we want three. Can it be done? Yes, it can be done. Go to the column settings in the top right corner, select it. And there you will see a plus that tells us we can add a new column, select it. And there in comes the column. Go to the plus in the first column. We bring in an image, click, hold and drag, drop it, and then select the image. Go to the settings all the way to the left and click on image to bring in the first one. And you will find these three other ones that we want to use. Select the image and you can see the name here on the right, gallery one, 03 gallery one, and then click select in the bottom right corner. A quick little thing I want to point out for you. Here within the thumbnail, you have a drop down list and currently it is set to custom. The custom means that this is going to take the shape of the column. So if I make changes to the column, there will be a change to the shape of this image. But if you want the image to stay exactly 100% the way that you designed it with the same ratio, you select original. And what I mean by ratio is actually aspect ratio. Once I click on the original, you will see that it turns into a square because I exported this image at a 700 by 700 pixels, which means it's a one to one. It's a square and I want to have it as a square. So knowing that my image is perfect, I want to keep it that aspect ratio. You can just go ahead and put it on original. However, just Understand that once you select an image to be original, you also need to put it on something in terms of pixels that will be useful for the screen you are displaying on. If this image was like 2000 by 2000, then you definitely don't want to use original because it will bring that big file in and you don't need that big file. Then you go for one of the other settings. You will see there are actually a few below that thumbnail, medium, large, right? and then you have that custom one. But we're going to leave it on original because I designed it like that. It's exactly the way I want it to be. What you have to learn next is a very common process within website design. We want to have those three images next to each other, and we want to see how it's going to look while we are designing it. But what happens is that people will bring in the other two images, and then they realize they need to make edits and then they make edits to the first image and then they have to copy those edits to the second and the third. Then they make a slight change to the first one. They have to make those changes again. So to avoid that, you focus on only one. But to give you a visual representation, go to the column settings at the top. And then instead of adding a new column, you go to duplicating this column. And once you duplicate a column, it's going to duplicate all the contents inside as well. 
select it once, select it twice, and you see we have three of them. But now we also have these other two columns on the right, which we don't want. You can right click on it. The moment you right click on something, you get this context little pop up, and I'll select delete. Or you can go to the top right corner where you have the options toolbar and select delete. Definitely, we're not going to work with the same three images, but that's just to give myself a little idea of what is going on here. Now we begin to build out a full width section, a full width block. So how do I get this image to stretch all the way to the side of my screen? For that, we go to the block settings, go to the settings configuration, and then next to width, you select the drop down and put it on full. And that's it. Now you see that it has taken up all the space of this block, but there is still a lot of space. So every time in Brizzy you bring in an image or a column or a block, there is some padding and margin supplied by default. What we need to go and do now is remove all of that. The first thing I'll do is go to the column settings, click on the column settings, and then styling. And then we have a look here in the sidebar. So there is padding applied, five at the top, 15 on the right, five at the bottom, and 15 on the left. Instead of dragging these sliders all the way to the left to get it to zero, I will go here and just link all of the sides so I can work with them uniformly. And now I grab the slider, drag it to zero, and I'm becoming that semi-hero very quickly. But if I look at the column here, there is still a little bit of white space at the top and white space at the bottom. But I've taken away all the spacing. There's no padding. There are no margins. So where is this coming from? Brazil gives a little bit of margins to every time you bring in an image. So now I select the image, click on it. We do the same settings, go to styling, and you will see padding is zero. But on margins, we have 10 pixels at the top and 10 pixels at the bottom. That's where that spacing is coming from. Let's link it. And by linking it, it drops to zero. And now when I hover here over the column, you will see there are no lines. Brilliant. Now, what I meant earlier by not working on each of these guys individually is instead of now going to this column and taking out all the padding, going to this image, taking the margins and then repeating it a third time, I can style out my first column and image perfectly and then just duplicate that again, right? Then I don't have to do all of that. But here comes a very big second important consideration. Before you do that, also remember that the same will apply for tablets and mobiles. I know this may feel a little bit overwhelming at the moment, but if you can grasp what I'm trying to say in the next few minutes, you'll save yourself a lot of additional work when you are designing anything on any builder. So before I go ahead and duplicate this column again, I'm going to go to tablet. I'll select the tablet design and you will see now we have the same issue because there is padding and margin supplied here. The first thing I'll do is go to the column settings, select it and you see it's open already. I'll link it and drag it to zero. We have the space at the top and the bottom, select the image again and then margins and that is closed down. Now we have already said that. For mobile, it's going to be stacked. And our question is, do we want it also full width? Why not? Let's go and do that. So we go to the first column, select the blue little arrow or the white arrow and the blue dot settings. Aha. So there are margins supplied in this column. That's interesting. Click it and you see this one says 10. So select it and type in zero to take that away. Then we select the image. And we go styling, it's already here, also 10 selected, it's on zero. And now we've reduced it. Ooh. Okay, now we jump back to desktop. Are you still with me? We go ahead and duplicate this one twice again, because we have three. Then we go to this one and delete it. Now, maybe you ask me, couldn't I just have designed out one and duplicated it? not have done that previous thing you did by putting in the image. Yes, you could have. This is just my preferred way. 
I like to have an image on the page. It gives me a visual representation of what I'm working with and space I have available. So I, I would just do that. But if you find it more easier just to work with one image, style it out on desktop, tablet, and mobile, and then copy it, that's fine. Let's change out the images. Select the first one. And now I don't have to make any of those changes in terms of padding and margins because I've already duplicated that column and the settings for the image. I select a new one, look at that. And click on the next image, go to image, delete it. Then we upload the last one or bring in the last one. Select, nicely done. And if we have a look now on tablet, you see, it looks good because we have already made those changes and the same with mobile. However, let's go back to desktop. Now we see here that we have in the block padding at the top of 75 pixels and padding at the bottom of 75 pixels. You can use the trick that we did earlier by click, hold and dragging it. But it's going to limit us to go as far as 15 pixels. Heaven knows why, why I cannot drag it to zero. Really wish I could. How can I get it to zero? Go to the block settings over here, select styling, and then link your padding and just drag it all the way to zero. And now they are all gone. We do the same for our tablet because there's a lot of padding applied here. Select the block and you can see padding at the top of 50, 15 on the left and right. Select them all and drag them down. And there they nicely go all the way. And the same for our mobile. Let's go to the settings here, padding, drag it to zero. Look at that. The last thing you can do that does work with images is to bring in a little bit of animation for all three of them. Not the same animation, a little variety so that they can draw the attention of the visitor. Again, you have the decision. Do you want to bring in the animation on a column basis or on an image basis? Toss a coin, make a decision. I'll go with column. And then we select effects and let's just make this weird just so that you can see the different kinds of effects that you can do i'll select rotate here and then direction we can say up left and it's going to swing up like that you can make it very slow like two seconds which is really bad don't do that like by the time people view it it's already You've already scrolled to another section on the page, but I'm just showing you how the animation can work. Don't get stuck on animation. Really, if you spend a lot of time on animation, you're just wasting time. Let's do zoom for this one. How does this one work? Oh, okay. Zoom is like that. Let's see. Zoom up. I will zoom up. Up. Oh, up. Oh, oh. uh, zoom left. Why not? Right? Why not? And we can reduce the delay, which means it will happen quickly, or we can increase the delay, which means the animation will only happen after a longer time. And now I want to do the animation for this one. Let's go here and select settings for the column and effects. And which one haven't did we choose? Bounce, let's do bouncy bounce. Bang, bang, and bounce in. Okay. And we just leave it like that. So let's say update. And then we go preview it on the front end to look at this flying circus. Here's our hero section, nice. A little bit about us. And then finally, the images come in. And you see this one that takes two seconds before the animation starts. I'll always be very critical of that because if you are on a mobile device, that is going to be a problem because we scroll like this on a mobile device. Two seconds in mobile scrolling time is an eternity. What you can do is that the animations are also responsive, which means that you can deactivate the animation for mobile and tablets as you please, is what I should do. So I'll go to mobile and then I'll click on the column settings and then you will see the effects open. I'll select none. And this way I can go through all three columns and take away the animation. Trust me on this. Animation like this on a mobile is not a good idea. Hmm, what is left? We're going to create a testimonial block slider next. Pretty awesome. And then the last thing we're going to do is create that contact form.